So yeah, so this is what Andrew has to deal with. He sort of wants to go, and now he's got to somehow work his way of getting all these dogs out. <laughs> No, I give up. So the dog has really, really nice beds. What does she sleep on? Me oven mitts. Look at this. She's like, no, I'm fucking curling up on me oven mitts. We're Pixie, Soda, and Luna. Three doggies on a tour of the UK. Our parents swapped pub life for full time van life. Along for the ride are our humans Stuart and Andrew. We've adjusted to life in the beds on wheels thingy. Jump in our beds with us and share our lovely walkies and adventure. Adve and don't forget to bring treats. So this is where we are. So we're at the Dal Beatty one, and there's seven of them. And you can stop here, can't you? And they, how much are they? Seven. Seven pound for the night. It's seven pound a night. But we've just realised that I knew there was these two, so I knew there was this one because that's the one I was looking at for next. But that's the that's where we're heading, isn't it? Up and round. Yes, we so we can stop at that one. Yeah. Then stop at that one, and then head up to air. Yeah. So at least there's two on the way through. So yeah, so we've been in Scotland a few days. Um, and we needed to head for some shopping, didn't we? We need gas is what we need, desperately. And it's something we're really, really struggling to find. Which I'm quite surprised on. Yeah, so we've, we've kind of been hiding for the weekend because it was bank holiday here in Scotland. So we've we kind of found a nice little park up at uh, New Abbey. Yes. At Sweetheart Abbey. Um, Absolute we, amazing park up. Yeah, lovely. So we, we kind of stayed there and just hid away while it was a bank holiday. We have no idea whether it was busy out there or not. I think one thing I've been we're, we're a little bit nervous of is we don't know how busy these places are going to be. It's school holidays and it's bank holiday weekend. So we get a little bit nervous of moving on. And then not being able to get, well, I get a little bit nervous, get nervous. moving on and not being able to park. Yeah. So you've probably seen on our Facebook posts um, that Soda, who's my dog, well, originally my dog, uh, that's the Black Labrador Collie Cross, hasn't been too well recently. And she's had to go over a course, two courses of antibiotics. So the, the, the tablets are finished. Um, and as you can see, she's fine, thank goodness. Some. Some moments, let's say, where well, we're waiting for some scan results, but uh, yeah, as you can see, she's fine. So yeah, so Andrew just explained it in the briefest way possible. So yeah, so we had to take her to the vets when we were in Oxford. Um, it was a bit of an emergency appointment. Um, she's eating fine, walking fine, doing everything that any normal dog does, completely fine. But she was having a bit of leakage, we'll put it as that. Lady and we, problems. yeah, ladies problems, and we kind of panicked a little bit, so I took us straight, so no we didn't, sorry, that's a lie, we, we rang our vets, our local vets up, and they said, take her in, so we took her in, they gave us some antibiotics, then when we were up north, we were like, right, we're going to take her back, went back, and they were like, possible two outcomes, we'll do this scan, if the scan comes back and she's got a normal size uterus then she's fine if she's got a larger uterus it's either going to be a major operation which we didn't know if she could get through um or well no easy way of putting it all we debated was the better best thing was letting her go to sleep while while everything was hunky-dory-ish yeah so we had a few tears more than a few tears. We cried for hours waiting for this stupid scan to come back. 
went back and picked her up. So they come running out like nothing was wrong, totally fine. The vet was like, yeah, scans come back. She's got the tiniest little bit of infection. Do give her these antibiotics? She'll be all right. So she's had these antibiotics, totally fine. Not a single thing wrong with her. Still dives around like an idiot. So yeah, so that was a bit of a tough couple of days. Oh, what a beautiful day. <laughs> I haven't said that in a while, because all it's done is rain. Do you want to tell people what happened on our lovely walk? Well, I'm just debating whether to take soda for a, for a wash and a shower. Because halfway around the forest, <laughs> she decided she'd come off the beaten track and ended up in a mud, up to her neck. It was like so a swamp. It was and like she'd, a swamp. And because it was all muddy, she didn't realise that there was water underneath it. We didn't realise, in all fairness. No. I dove on the floor to grab her out. So she is yeah, we, minging. She uh, is minging. How was your harness? Oh, oh so look yeah. at that. So there. I still think you should get a bath. And do it's black. It's rotten. Look at it. Smell it. Does it smell really bad? No, it just smells like mud. Ah, oh, it should be alright then. So we've had a decent walk then, apart from the soda. And let me just, I'm going to quickly show you around actually because I'm not sure how pretty it is. So yeah, so that's your main road in. And park there and there's another spot there and there's some more spots here and then when you get right round to the side I'm saying right round to the side it's literally just there you can see it just through the trees there's a water point and then there's a general parking over there and then just past there you've also got some toilets it's lovely and quiet the internet isn't too good though See on that side, and we're in a little tiny point, and then the other sea on that side. That is so weird. Where are we at? Where are we at? We're at the southernmost point in Scotland, the Mull of Galloway. And as you can see, the views are just absolutely breathtaking. Stunning. And Andrew's having, what was it again? White chocolate and raspberry biscuit. Yep. With a cappuccino. Very nice. And we picked the perfect day to get here, because we've had really bad weather. And then look at that. It's a bit windy. Really? It's blown to cobwebs, cobwebs away. Wow, well, that doesn't mess your hair off. <laughs> and it's not even fast because it's obviously at a height. You wouldn't have thought that it would actually took that long for them to stop from paraffin to go electric. That's a long time. Well, electric's been around since 1890s. So you'd have thought that the 70 years out of date. So yeah, so we'd, Andrew had to ask the question on the way down of what actually, of how it originally was written. Of course, I can't help myself. I've got to find all the traditions and spookiness of this place. And look, see? Legends say that the tides were brought on by nine witches who knotted a spell in order to sink a ship and drown the witchfinder on board. The 
stuck there and it's like you get taken off. 